Now, I want you to know that the last speaker of the day asked to be the last speaker of the day. He's not here because he's the end of the line or we just wanted more interesting companies first. He specifically asked for the last spot of the day because he started his day marketing on the East Coast. He's been on a plane all day. He's exhausted. Nobody wants a beer more than the CEO of Cardinal Energy probably at the end of this day. So uh, Scott has uh, been... Um, uh, I followed Scott's career for a long time. Uh, we, we were with him at Midway when that got bought out. And then uh, I watched Cardinal as a, uh, and Summerland as Private Co. since the day they've got going. Uh, he's done a, a great job here in the last year in uh, getting a new suite of assets into the company, lightening his crude mix, and uh, still having a lot of torque to the oil price. So he's got a dividend that when I went in to talk to him last September said was rock solid right down to $40 a barrel. And he says and it would have to stay there for a while to, for me to even think about it. So now with the upturn in commodity pricing, his stocks had a fantastic benefit out of that. And he's going to give us the full update and how he's going to move forward in the future. Scott Ratushni from Cardinal Energy. Thanks, Keith. Uh, I'll figure out the controls here. And okay, a, a quick snapshot on Cardinal. I think what we'll do is give, give you guys a look back and so you can understand where we're going to go uh, on a go-forward basis. So we've been around since 2012. Um, we started off with a specific mandate. So we're a lot different than most of the companies you've seen today. We set off to do two things. One is to pay a dividend, and the other one is to show a little bit of growth every year. And when we looked at it and figured out how we're going to build a, build a company that's going to do that, it all came down to declines. And we, have, we do have the lowest decline of any conventional producer in, in Canada. We run 9, 9 to 10% decline right now. Um, and that, sort of, that makes the model sustainable. Uh, we run through it. Uh, dividend right now is 42 cents a share. We've weathered some tough times uh, with one dividend cut since inception. Um, like he said, dividends rock solid at these prices. In fact, we're probably in a position where we're looking at, uh, at doing something with it next year. Uh, we've guided this year at 2021 20 to 21.5. Um, on a quarterly basis, we're, we're just over 21 in Q1. We'll, we haven't drilled any, really any wells. We've drilled two wells this year so far, so we'll drop a bit in Q2, and you'll see some growth into Q3 and Q4. Our focus has been really to lighten the load. So we've, we started off as a predominantly WCS producer. Uh, when we when our first couple of years, we were almost 100% um, uh, medium quality, quality crude, 21, 23 API, all based on WCS pricing. Some of the big things in Cardinal that, that where we stand out on is, is, is our reserve base. Uh, most of the companies in our peer group have about a third of the reserves in approved producing category. We run about 65, 70% of our reserves as pre producing, so a very solid asset base. The banks like it. Um, we've got a very conservative borrowing policy. Uh, we're just going through our bank renewals right now, and, and we've got a, uh, it's an asset-based borrowing base at our, at our bank. We've got a $475 million borrowing base. We choose to set a very conservative bank line of $325 million, knowing we're never going to borrow above that. We don't want to pay standby fees on, on the higher balances. Uh, and we're drawing about, we'll exit the quarter drawing about $200 million. Uh, it will get paid down as, as the year goes on here. So we look back at, at uh, this is a slide from our January 2017 PowerPoint. So we set out in, <coughs> in 17 to do four things. One is to increase our light oil exposure. Second is to increase the net backs, reduce our operating costs, and then maintain the dividend. So we went through... 2017 the start of it was a pretty rocky time and and uh, and we thought we did a fairly good job so we did two major acquisitions uh, we did an acquisition in Grand Prairie and another one um, from Apache and in, in the Mydale and House Mountain areas um, both light oil focused um, and both change around so just a quick snapshot we paid 31 million dollars for it we spent about 12 million dollars drilling on it last year uh, got about six million of cash flow back and, and our, our approved developed producing reserve value at year end was 63 million. 
the acquisition came with two Dunvegan oil pools. Um, the one thing you have to appreciate about Cardinals, we don't drill a lot of wells in a year. We'll, we'll drill 12 to 15 wells per year. Uh, we just don't need the, need the volume to replace production. So the first pool we started developing is, uh, is, is uh, one of the Dunvegan pools. It came with about 20 drilling locations, uh, mostly all development drilling. Um, we've drilled, um, we've drilled uh, six last year and two in Q1, and we'll drill another, another two wells in uh, third quarter this year. The other uh, major acquisition, which was, which was really transformational for us, was Mydale and House Mountain. Yeah. Um, both bought from Apache, we closed on July 1st. Um, the, the biggest thing about it is, is we got Mydale out of the package. Uh, Mydale is a world-class oil pool in, by Canadian standards. Uh, both Mydale and Weyburn are, are two of the original uh, CO2 flood properties in Canada. Uh, Mydale has been running at a 2-3% decline for the last 10 years. Um, in fact, it's the same. we haven't drilled a well on it yet. It's exactly the same production today as it was when we closed on July 1st last year. Um, we'll start drilling it this summer, uh, and, and we see a really large inventory in there. We, we see two to 300 locations in Mydale, so it'll carry Cardinal forward for quite a, quite a few years. Again, you consider our pace of drilling is sort of 12 to 15 wells a year. Um, it doesn't take much to, to make this uh, sustainable. House Mountain, another light oil property. It's, uh, it's just north of Swan Hills. Uh, again, light oil, 95% uh, oil production on the acquisition. Um, there is a drilling inventory. It kicks in at a bit higher price than, than Mydell does. Um, if you go through Car Cardinal on a gross basis, we have uh, varying degrees, degrees of drilling inventory based on price points. Uh, if you look at a $70 oil, we probably have about $600 million worth of drilling inventory right now um, on, on a PV10 basis and kind of back it back to about $300 million worth of inventory at $50 oil. So if you look back and say, okay, we set out to achieve a number of things in 17, but you look at the oil production, our light oil barrels increased. We, uh, we bumped our light oil barrels by 236%. We didn't drill in very many WCS-based um, wells in 17, so our production actually dropped year over year on the medium quality crude. And then the ultimate report card, what do we look like at the end of it? So we went to increase our light oil exposure. We increased it from 22% to 50% last year. We increased our net backs, and we, this is sort of time zeroed on a pricing point from $15 a barrel to $20 a barrel. We reduced our operating costs by over 10%, and we ma maintained our dividend for the year. So we, we looked back at it and said it was a fairly good, uh, fairly good report card for the year. For 2018, where, where are we headed this year? So we're really trying to prove up a sustainable business model. Um, at this price oil price point, we have a lot of free cash flow. We're playing a little bit of catch up right now with our hedge book. Uh, we took a look back from inception. We've made, up until uh, December 31st of 17, we made $43 million on our hedge book in the first five years. We're gonna give back probably half of it this year and it's the first year where we've been in a, in a, uh, in a significant price increase. We're really focused on making sure we don't spend more than 100% of our cash flow on a quarterly basis. We're running a business and we need to prove it on a quarterly basis to ourselves and to shareholders that we're not gonna outspend our, our cash flows. Uh, the focus for the year is we wanna get our bank debt down. We put some debt on to do these two acquisitions last year. Um, we're always told to buy low and sell high and we didn't get rewarded for that in the marketplace, but I think it'll catch up over time. So. Uh, net bank debt to, to cash flow uh, one time, sh we should get there by, by Q1 of 19, uh, just, just organically. We want to maintain our decline and that means don't pushing on the growth button. We can grow in this price environment sort of 5 to 8% a year without having to, to push on that 10% decline. And, can, and we want to continue to improve our net backs. We've got a number of long lead time um, operating cost reduction projects. Um, we we're focused on two areas. One is, is Cogen. We, uh, we've got large oil facilities, but four large oil fa facilities throughout the company, and we are big electrical consumers. We, our electrical bill is about $40 million a year right now, and we need to get ourselves off the grid. Um, if you equate it to op costs, we're about four bucks a barrel in op costs. We can get the whole thing off the grid. Uh, we, don't, we, we don't own the lines, but we can get the major facilities off. So we think we can get about 250 a barrel um, 
off of our electrical, electrical charges over the next couple of years. Um, we'll have about 40, 45 million dollars of capital spending to get there, um, but we think it's, uh, most of these projects will pay out in two years or less. So it's something we're starting to undertake. We got our first project up in, uh, in Slave Lake. Um, it'll be up and running by the end of June. Um, it takes a $60,000 a month electrical bill and turns it into uh, burning some solution gas, which we, do, which we actually lose money on up there trying to get rid of. Um, we've got similar projects. We'll get another two or three done this year, um, various scales, and then we'll, we'll keep going into 19 and 20 with them. The other thing we're trying to get going is, uh, again, with all these larger facilities, we're pipeline connected for everything in the company. Uh, we have opportunities to blend oil. So we've um, historically haven't taken in third-party oil, and we're starting to do it now. Uh, we're converting, uh, first facility we're converting is Mydale in Saskatchewan. Uh, we've got a truck terminal there already, so we're uh, adding some tankage and blending and um, blending facilities, and we'll start bringing, I guess three, there's three, three ways we'll attack it. One is butane blending our existing crude. Uh, second is trucking in some of our heavier crudes, our 20 API uh, crudes from, uh, from Jenner and uh, around Med Hat areas into there and uh, the third thing we'll do is start bringing in third-party cr crudes and blending them up. So we've identified four facilities within the company that we can do this in. They're not big capital projects. Um, it's just a learning curve for us to get up to speed. So the first one should be up and running in August and we'll carry on um, with the other three projects throughout uh, the next year or so. 2018, I don't see us uh, having a dividend bump in 18. I think we'll stay, we'll stay where we're at, focus on the debt reduction. And, uh, and revisit it in early 19. So if you look at Cardinal by area, um, the first, the top two areas are uh, both light oil, the bottom are, are WCS price product, uh, fairly consistently spread out by area. Uh, Mitsu and House Mountain, um, again light oil. We've got no drilling plans in here. Drilling didn't really kicks in here about $60 WTI and when we did our budgets last November, uh, oil wasn't there, so we uh, we didn't have drilling 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 plans for the company uh, for 18 here. We will get back in here in 19 if prices hold and start drilling again. Um, a lot of capital projects in here for off cost reductions. Again, blending at both these facilities and cogen um, in both facilities. Uh, Grand Prairie was a, was a little property we picked up um, as, as part of one of the first acquisitions. Um, we've been having great drilling results in here where these wells are paying out in eight, nine months at this price point. Um, we'll keep drilling a few more wells this year and then the property needs to get some, uh, an EOR, EOR scheme implemented on it for 19, so we'll start water flood probably next summer on it. We've got a similar pool just to the Celta here. Again, it's got about 20 locations on it, but it's in, our, in the scope of Cardinal, it's almost two years drilling inventory. So central area is Wainwright and, and Chauvin in, uh, in the eastern edge of Alberta. Um, these are the first properties we bought with the company. Um, we haven't drilled a well here since we bought them. Uh, we've averaged a 2 to 3 percent decline per year in the properties. A lot of it's just water flood maintenance. We, we go in and we tweak the water floods um, and we seem to get barrels back every year. Um, our, our reserves grow every year on this property. We reduce operating costs so you bring the reserves from the tail end back in again and uh, it's kind of the properties that keep on giving. So Bantry, uh, Bantry was the drilling for Cardinal for the first five years. Um, we had four years of really good results in here. Um, we're, we're drilling uh, a channel play. It's a Glock channel play that sits above an existing Ellerslie producing zone. So Ellerslie produces at about 900 meters and we, <coughs> excuse me, we have a series uh, we have uh, a lot of bypass pay here, so we see logs on these Glock channels. And for the first four years, we could drill from log to log. So I think anybody in this room could have drilled the wells. It was kind of drilling from point A to point B. As we started drilling into, into uh, 2017, we lost the second control point. So we had the first control point, didn't know where the channel went. And it's, if you can envision it, we're chasing old river channels around, and they do not dr travel in straight lines typically. So. So we, uh, we had mediocre drill results in here last year. We'd, a lot of times we drill, a f I would try to drill a 12 to 1400 meter long horizontal. A lot of times we get three or 400 meters out and we drill out a channel and we couldn't find it again. 
So what we did this, this winter in January and February, and you, you see little red dots on the, on the map there, is we went and drilled a bunch of strat tests. We did a 10 well strat test program where we went in a small hole, hole uh, well, uh, zero disturbance, drilled it, logged it, and got out of there. And um, it, it was good, it was a good program. We found uh, Glock channels in six of the 10 wells we drilled. We also went down and tag, tagged the Ellerslie in here, which is, I guess, a, an emerging play. It's an old play, but it's getting a second life. Uh, and we found a couple of little Ellerslie pools as, as part of drilling it, too. So um, worthwhile program. We'll do it again next year. And um, we just uh, actually just drill, finished drilling the first well yesterday on, on uh, off these strat tests. Um, we flipped up our drilling program a bit this year. And we drilled the first well in five and a half days, which is a record for us in the area. The previous best was about eight days. So we went to a monobore type well and, uh, and had really good success with it. So Mydale, Mydale was the big prize. This is, uh, we think it's in the top three oil pools in, in Western Canada. Uh, it's been under, uh, uh, it's got a direct anal analog in Weyburn. Uh, both Weyburn and Mydale, which, uh, which touch each other, um, produced from the same Mydell interval. Uh, there's three sub-layers within the My Mydell interval. They were both discovered by Shell in the, in the 50s. Uh, Shell sold um, Weyburn to Pan Canadian and, and went on to Snovus, now Whitecap owns it. And um, Shell sold Mydell to Apache and, and then we ended up with it. If you look at the two pools, it's kind of the tale of two cities. They took two different approaches to development. Um, a Pan Canadian took the approach that each of these layers within the Mydell interv interval were sort of three different layers to the cake. And they exploited each layer individually. So they'd come in, they'd drill the bottom layer, they'd, start, they'd put water injection into it and then flip over to CO2 and start to alternate them. Then they move up a layer and do the next layer and, and then do the next layer. Um, they've got great results. They've got a 33% recovery in the pool already and their engineering suggests that they'll have an ultimate recovery of 46%. Apache took a much different approach to it. They thought all three zones were connected and they would just exploit it. So they would come and drill it and they didn't care how they drill it. Sometimes they drill one layer, sometimes they drill the serpentine through a couple of the layers. Um, but they put all their injection into the bottom, they put water into the bottom and then all the CO2 in the bottom thinking it the CO2 would migrate up and liberate the oil. And it didn't, there was a lot of vertical uh, permeability, permeability barriers. So you've got a very underexploited reservoir in relation to Weyburn. We've got 20% recovery on the pool to date. Um, and with our current drilling and current reserves, they estimate another, uh, we have another 4%. So our job now is to take the water and the CO2 from the lower zone and start pushing it up to the upper, upper layers and start drilling the upper layers to, to counteract it. Um, it's, it's pretty compelling when you look at it and see how much opportunity there is there. A 1% increase in recovery factor on this pool replaces Cardinal's production for a year. So it's a very important asset to us and it's something that we see growing over the next little while. We think we've got a plan that we've kicked off now where we've started just surface optimization where we're starting to get water and CO2 up into the upper layers. We start drilling in here in August and we see a big part of our drilling plans for 19 and 20. Um, on our sort of our five year outlook, we think we can double production in this pool over five years. So the balance of 18, um, we see production dropping a bit in Q2, bouncing back up in Q3 as we get the drill bit going again, and then we should show a little growth in, in, uh, in Q4. Um, just for comparison, our average production, I think, in Q4, 17, was about 20,200. So we're, we'll, we'll, we will show 5 to 7% year-over-year growth, um, again, staying within, within a budgets. Payout ratios again focused on making sure we're under 100%. Um, so it puts us into sort of a three-year strategy and we look back at Cardinal and we've always traded it, we historically have traded at a premium to our peers and the only thing that's really differentiated us fr from that is our really is our debt. We historically ran from zero to 0.5 times debt to cash flow. We're pushing, we're pushing over two, we're running right now around 1.3, 1.4 times. So we've got to get it back down. We've got to, it's a conservative asset, it's conservative asset base, and we have to make sure all aspects of the business are, are, are lined up with that. So the focus on, over the long term is to get it back down to there. 
With the blending facilities the, and some general op cost reduction as, as well as cogen, we think we can drop our op cost down from 21 down to 18, 19. Uh, we think that's very achievable. Uh, we'll continue to increase that light oil weighting quarter over quarter. And we think we can deliver, us, deliver modest growth next year. So if we look forward to 19, we've got, um, what are we looking for? We're looking for cash flows plus or minus, this is sort of our unhedged version. We're muted a bit this year. We're probably 135 a cash flow this year, given the, head, the hedging losses and the, and the slower pickup on WCS. Um, we need about $50 million a year to keep the lights on, do our facility projects, drill enough wells to, uh, to keep production flat or show a little bit of growth. Which, and we right now we pay about $50 million for the dividend. So we've got $125 million essentially of free cash flow if you take the sustaining capital away, which gives us a lot of options for, for 19. We should we run an excess funds flow of around $75 million. But that's cardinal. Sure. We, uh, I think what, one of the things we underestimated the, what we were going to get for proceeds on them. When we, bought, um, when we bought the assets from Apache, it came with some royalties and some fee title lands, and we earmarked them for sale. And when we were evaluating it back in April or May of, of 17, the best precedents we had were similar, almost identical assets sold, Penn Growth and Penn West both sold identical assets. And we looked back and they traded at a, at a fairly healthy multiple. Um, when we came up and we put these things up for sale, we didn't get the bids that they got historically. I think it how the, the, the main buyers were Franco Nevada, Prairie Sky, Freehold, who had all lost a bit of their multiples over the time, and all of them had transitioned their businesses in more into fee title lands than, than gross overriding royalty purchases. So we didn't get the bids. Um, we sold a couple of them because uh, we had to. We had to get. We we, we said we we're going to do it. Um, We've got one little piece left of the Weyburn, uh, uh, the Weyburn interest that we'll piece off. Um, we've got a deal done with it. It should close prior to quarter end, but it's not a big piece. It's kind of $12, $13 million. Uh, and then we will we'll hold off and we won't sell the last batch. We just didn't think uh, we needed to. Commodity prices saved our bacon a bit in that sense. That would, um, why sell it if you don't have to? It's strictly a multiple of cash flow, and, and in that case, historically, they'd sold between 15 and 20 times, and we got bids in between 10 and 15 times, so it, it dropped a, a significant uh, amount. Um, if that you put it into, into drilling locations, uh, we think the, that 10 strat well program proved up about 20 locations. We'll typically get two wells side by side in the Glock channel and then the Ellerslie wells. Um, I think you want to keep building the inventory up if there are, if you, there's land expiry issues, there's other things that come up over time, so you want to understand where your uh, locations are. It wasn't expensive. We spent 2.3 million drilling the 10 wells. Everyone's fatigued, it looks like. I think you guys know need to you guys need to have a beer, not me, I think. <laughs> Thanks, Steve.